In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear our Lord Jesus Christ say, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
the ministers of thy church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brethren. Grant, we beseech thee, that these thy servants, whom thou dost vouchsafe to choose today for the office of the diaconate, may be efficacious in deeds, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Deacons must be serious, not double-tongued, nor addicted to much wine, nor greedy for gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. 
and let them also be tested first. Then if they prove themselves blameless, let them serve as deacons. Let deacons be the husband of one wife, and let them manage their children and their households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves, and also great confidence in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trodden under foot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let, let your light so shine before men. Then they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord.
let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Armando Alejandro. Present. Nathan Davis. Present. John Jenkins. Present. Keith Way. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Then relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. My dear candidates for the diaconate, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what a day of Easter joy for the whole church. For today, four of our own from the ordinary of the chair of St. Peter will be ordained deacons. They will be ordained servants, following the example of, and the command of Christ, who though himself God incarnate, came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his own life as a ransom for many. Armando, Nathan, John, and Keith will be strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit in this sacrament and ordained to a ministry that is threefold. Filled with the Holy Spirit, these four men will assist the bishop and the priests in the service of the Word of God, preaching and teaching the Gospel. Consecrated by the laying on of hands which comes to us from the Apostles, they are bound more closely to the service of the altar, and so are commissioned to perform works of charity in the name of the whole church. What the church believes in and through this sacrament is beautiful and profound, and in a way, terrifying. These men will be so conformed to Christ by the grace of holy orders that you, dear friends, will recognize in them and in their ministry His loving presence, the compassion, the mercy, the word, the strength of Christ Himself. Conformity to Christ, the fruit of each of the sacraments in its own way, is writ large in the sacrament of holy orders. And as you, dear brothers, now advance to the order of deacons, consider carefully, therefore, the nature and dignity of the office you are about to undertake. You know from your studies that the word deacon from Greek means simply one who serves. And in the church, this ministry of service is expressed in a diakonia, a service of the sacred liturgy, of the word, and of charity. By ordination to the diaconate, you are made a minister of the altar, and so you exercise a particular diaconia of the sacred liturgy. You prepare the altar for the Eucharistic sacrifice, and you give the body and blood of the Lord to his people. By serving the church in this way, by exercising the ministry of deacon at Mass, you truly contribute to bringing up and building up the body of Christ that is the church itself. And your service at the altar also helps your people to pray. Because of your care of sacred things, the faithful are more readily able to enter into the rhythms and rituals of worship, so that liturgy becomes not just something we do as if it were some sort of performance piece, but it expresses who we are as the church, the bride and body of Christ who worships her Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
Similarly, your command, your diaconia of service is summarized by the command of the, of the risen Lord to his disciples. He tells them to go out, to teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ordination authorizes you to preach, to teach, to evangelize, not in your own name, but in the name of the church, strengthening and confirming the people of God in their faith. There is an in, indeed an intimate connection between your service of the word and the faith of your people, the faith that has been rightly handed down generation after generation. This service is grounded in a realization that God is not an abstract concept. His word is not a piece of history. But he speaks today, here and now, as he has spoken in every century of the church's existence. And speaking in order to do what? But to evoke our response of faith. To draw us in to that profession in which we find our glory and our salvation. And so the church's faith, the doctrines which you know and have studied, are not some sort of intellectual exercise disconnected from the liturgical proclamation of the world of the word or the real concerns of your very real parishioners. Rather, the doctrines of the church, the wisdom of the church distilled through the centuries is what helps us to discern precisely what God is saying to us today in the scriptures that we read. To help his people know their faith, to live the riches of that faith in the church, which is their faith. This is your ministry. This is your mission. And this you need to do by always thinking with the church and preaching ex corde ecclesia from the heart of the church, grounding every word that falls from your lips in the tradition, in the word of God, and in the magisterium. You are the servant of the truth, not its innovator. You give voice to the, to the faith once delivered to the saints. You don't invent it. To be at the service of the word is to be at the service of people's faith, proposing Catholic teaching in its breadth and beauty for the nourishment of the people of God, and yes, to draw still others into full communion with us. Finally, you are ordained to the diaconia of charity, a service in the name of the church to the poor and to the suffering and the needy. The diaconia caritatis does indeed include the very practical ways in which we express Christian charity to those in need. But it also includes other things that will occupy your time as deacons. Administration the good ordering of things in the parish so that limited resources are put to good and effective use. It includes intentional pastoral availability. Be present so that the faithful in your community have an opportunity to talk to an ordained person about the things that are important to them. That is charity. It includes the missionary impulse at the very heart of what it means to be in the ordinarian, a willingness to go almost anywhere in North America to serve the needs of the church. That is a particular kind of charity, and one which I have seen again and again produce tremendous fruit and unexpected grace. Armando and Nathan, as you, among the four, will commit yourselves to a life of celibate chastity for the sake of the kingdom of God, I urge you to reflect upon this promise precisely as an expression of the diaconia of charity. Celibate chastity for the sake of the kingdom is a poignant and visible sign of what it means to be consecrated to Christ, given to him, and handed over to his bride, the church, in generous service of others. In his 1967 encyclical on priestly celibacy, Pope Paul VI reflected that the overarching motivation for the promise of celibacy 
is nothing less than the love of Christ Jesus revealed definitively on the cross when he gave over his life and laid it down for his friends. For those who embrace the celibate life, St. Paul VI says this, it is the mystery of the newness of Christ, of all that he is, of all that he stands for. It is the sum of the highest ideals of the gospel and of the kingdom. It is a particular manifestation of grace in the community, which springs from the paschal mystery of the Savior. It is what makes the choice of celibacy desirable and worthwhile to those who are called by the Lord Jesus to this life. Thus, they intend not only to participate in his priestly office, but also to share with him his very condition of living. My dear Ordinandi, each of you, celibate and married, stand before the mystery of the cross of Christ. The total gift of self, that is, ordained ministry, is a laying down of one's life for your friends. And this the gospel calls the greatest love. As such, it is a privileged embrace of the person of Jesus Christ, so as to share his mission, and offers to the church and to the world a reflection of the very face of love itself. The incarnation continues by grace in you and in your conformity to the Savior. As I said, there are moments when the enormity of that reality is terrifying, and when your own sense of unworthiness overtakes you. But put those aside, because you are not worthy, but he is. You are not strong, but he is. Do not be afraid. You are not asked to engage this work and this ministry on your own. You are given gifts of divine grace that work in and through you. You are joined to a body of priests in the ordinarian and a body of priests throughout the Catholic world who will love you, who will encourage you, who will certainly challenge you, and occasionally even support you. <laughs> and of course, you have the prayers of your family, your friends, and the faithful entrusted to your care, so many of them have come here tonight, not to watch a spectacle, but to join in the prayer of the whole church as she calls down the Holy Spirit so that Christ's ministry may continue in our midst. So yes, the church believes that ordination affects the sacramental conformity to Christ to such an extent that the community of the church recognizes in the ordained minister the authentic presence and action of the risen Lord Jesus. This rite of ordination is the church's way of emphasizing that all ordained ministry in the church is diaconia. And so whether you are called to the ministry of priest or even of bishop, it begins here with the self-emptying service lived out in different ways and in different circumstances throughout the life of the church. Those of you to be ordained priests must take this to heart. Diaconate is not another step on a path to priesthood. It's its heart. It is the sacramental character that when carried properly into the priesthood, gives the priesthood its dynamism. In this month of May, dedicated in a special way to Our Lady, I commend you to the powerful intercession of Our Lady of Walsingham and the Lady of the Atonement. She is the one who was and remains always the first disciple of the Lord, the one whose first impulse at receiving the grace of the Annunciation was to go and give herself in service to her cousin Elizabeth. Let us pray as I pray fervently that Blessed Mary will intercede for you today and every day of your ordained ministry, so that you may follow faithfully the example of her servant son and fulfill in your diaconate his perennial command, love one another.
Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the Church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the Apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the Gospel and the Church's tradition? I do. Nathan and Armando, who are prepared to embrace the celibate state, do you resolve to keep forever this commitment to remain celibate as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and in the service of God and man? I do. Do all of you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer which is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? I do. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? I do, with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. promise respect and obedience to me and my successors. I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these, his servants whom in his kindness he raises to the order of the diaconate.
graciously hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify your, by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age, as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the Church, his body adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve you in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and to the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen. The ministry of serving at table we beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct, so that by the example of, the, of this way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of thy hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the all of the church. Holy Father, whose Son did choose to wash the feet of his disciples, and thereby to set us an example, accept, we pray, our oblations of our service, and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly pray thee through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. And we ask that thou accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices. We offer them unto thee first for thy holy Catholic Church, that thou vouchsafe to keep her in peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with thy servant Francis, our Pope, with me, thine unworthy servant, and all the faithful guardians of the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids, and all who here around us stand, whose faith is known unto thee, and their steadfastness manifest, on whose behalf we offer unto thee, or who themselves offer unto thee this sacrifice of praise, for themselves and for all who are theirs, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their health and well-being, and who offer their prayers unto thee, the eternal God, the living and the true. United in one communion, we venerate the memory first of the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, of blessed Joseph, his spouse, as also of the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Thaddeus, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Protagonus, John and Paul, Costas and Damian, and of all thy saints, granted by their merits and prayers, we may in all things be defended with the help of thy protection. This, then, is the oblation of our service and that of thine whole family, which we offer also for thy servants, whom thou hast kindly advanced to the order of the diaconate. We beg thee graciously to accept it, Lord, and in thy mercy to preserve in them the gifts thou hast given, that what they have received from thy divine goodness, they may fulfill by the aid of thy divine grace. Vouchsafe. Vouchsafe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God, his Almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Likewise, after supper, taking also this goodly chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. servants and thy holy people also remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ thy son our Lord as also his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven to offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty the pure victim the holy victim the immaculate victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation but safe to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance and to accept them even as thou didst vouchsafe to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim, which thy high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. 
We humbly beseech the Almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angel to thine altar on high in the sight of thy divine majesty, that all we who at this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, o Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us, sealed with the seal of faith, and who sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing, of life, and of peace. To us sinners also, thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part in fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints, within whose fellowship we beseech thee admit us, not weighing our merit, but granting us forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, dost sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon us. My whom and with whom and in whom, to thee, O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, intercession of the blessed and glorious ever virgin mary mother of god with thy blessed apostles peter and paul with andrew and all the saints favorably grant peace in our days that by the help of thine availing mercy we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress Christ, who said to thine apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of thy church, and grant to her peace and unity according to thy will, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with my spirit. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia.
We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord with property as always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for the God of us in his holy mysteries, with the spirit of the Lord, most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us that by thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very sake of thy glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers to the gospel of the sacraments and of charity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. especially the afflicted and poor. Amen. May he who hath entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who hath appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. 